You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We're continuing our international series today, talking with our friends serving internationally. And today we're heading to the Kingdom of Cambodia. Our friends, the Reverend JP and Amy Sima, who serve the Lord in the Kingdom of Cambodia. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's a great pleasure. Thanks for having us. I'm looking forward to catching up with you all. It's been a while since we talked. I think last time we talked was right in the it, it, when things were really getting crazy with the pandemic here in the States. And uh, you've had some time now to serve stateside and uh, connecting with your network and, and just doing some home, I forgot the word. Service. Home service. Thank you. Doing some home service here as well. And so looking forward to catching up with you on all those details. Before we get to that, for our listeners who maybe don't know your story, share with with us about how the Lord brought you to serve in the kingdom of Cambodia? Great question. You know, it was 15 years ago or more when I was sitting at the seminary in St. Louis and happened to catch up with one of LCMS's former missionaries. And now she continues to work at the synodical office in St. Louis, Erin Alter. And it was her encouragement that really made us look at international service. And so we went straight from seminary overseas and have been serving in Asia for, gosh, going on 14 years now. And we've been in Cambodia for three, the, la- the last three of those 14 years. The short sure. answer to your question also about how we got there is we said that we were willing to go anywhere. And then they said, would you go to <laughs> Cambodia? <laughs> <laughs> and, and there you have it. <laughs> now you're there. <laughs> and now we're there. So tell us about Cambodia. And you guys have been there for for a couple of years now. I think uh, the last time we talked, it was still a new thing. And tell us about the kingdom of Cambodia the, and the place where you live there. Yeah, so we live in Phnom Penh, the capital city. And uh, the kingdom of Cambodia's population is 16 million. So it's not a, a large country, but it's a dynamic one. It's one that is kind of caught between the um, the traditional culture that's uh, been its foundation for a long time and then the modernizing influence that is uh, slowly but surely taking hold as the country develops. And it's been developing uh, fairly uh, rapidly for several years. And so living in Phnom Penh, we get to see that firsthand as we ride in the streets, you know, beaten up old bicycles, you see motorbikes, you see cars, you see Lamborghinis, you get the whole gamut of uh, transportation and somehow the traffic works in the midst of all that. Tell us more about, as you've continued to learn about the people you serve and, and the ways that you get to serve the, the people in Cambodia. Yeah, so we partner with the Cambodia Lutheran Church, which is a collection of say 25 or so congregations. And I use that term actually a little bit loosely. In, in Cambodia, it's very uncommon for a church to actually have a dedicated church building. Most congregations will meet in uh, a pastor or church leader's home, or sometimes even in an office. Our local church in Phnom Penh, Christ Lutheran, meets in, uh, at the bottom of, an, of a house that's been rented for an office. And yeah, this is a, a small collection of congregations that's growing and doing what it can to reach out to its the people in the communities in which it finds itself. They're working a lot on meeting uh, different needs, whether it's evangelism projects or material needs sometimes. Certainly during COVID, there's been an, an, an increased need for food aid and other kinds of support for those who've lost jobs, have been affected by, by COVID economically. Amy, what, what do you get to do on the field there? Yes, I help serving the women and children in our church by teaching Sunday school with one of the other Cambodian pastor's wives and have also recently started doing a women's fellowship once a month with women from our local congregation. But I think in a larger sense, we also are just still learning about the language and the culture and also walking alongside our church partners as they get a better sense of what they are doing as a church. I think in most places, there's not always a clear understanding of how to be salt and light in a place. And so a lot of the time that we spend is also just in having those conversations and helping our church partners to have a more clear sense of how to share the gospel in their communities, and then how we can equip them to do that better. 
How did the challenges of COVID, the pandemic, impact the ways that you're given to serve? And have you seen blessings come out of those as well? <laughs> yeah, the, Yes, it was impacted. And yes, there were blessings. Absolutely. There's been closures just in Cambodia, just as there have been here in the United States. We've We've been uh, dealing with church closures off and on since early 2020. And so the churches will be closed for months at a time and then they'll be able to open and back and forth. And that's hard. You know, family church on Sundays is a blessing and it is good to continue to uh, uphold that pattern of worshiping. And yet we miss being with our people. And so we've had to adjust to that reality. But even in the midst of that, God does bless. And so one of the things we've been, continued to do mostly through the lockdowns has been to meet our with our youth group, our local church's youth group, you know, 10 to 15 high school, college age youth who are able to show up at our house on Saturday nights because it's a smaller group, we're still able to gather. And there was one girl, Hekadai, and she, for the longest time, had actually delayed her baptism. And the reason for that is because her family is a traditional Cambodian family. What I mean by that is that they're, they're Buddhist. In, in Cambodia, to be Cambodian is to be Buddhist. And so, be it to be Christian is to be foreign or other. And that means that she was nervous to open up with her family about her faith, lest they think that she's departing from her identity as a member of that family or as a member of Cambodia. And so she delayed her baptism for quite a long time. And we prayed with her, we encouraged her, went through a process of discipleship discernment. And it was in September of 2020 that she decided to be baptized. And the, the remarkable part about all that is that that was during a church closure period. And so we could not baptize her in the context of a local church service. Instead, we baptized her in our living room oh. during one of our youth group meetings. The local pastor, Pastor Salim, came to our house and we had a little mini uh, rite of baptism right there in our living room. That was a real highlight, I would say, over the whole um, year of COVID closures. Yeah, absolutely. What are some of the the ways that you're able to connect with people and, and build these relationships with the people around you in your community? Oh, many different ways from just being there in our neighborhood. You know, sometimes in the four to five o'clock hour, Amy and I will put out our chairs at our, at our front gate and sit and just watch the kids bicycle or rollerblade by and strike up conversations. Our, our house has become sort of a neighborhood hub where <laughs> kids of really all ages will just come in and out and, and hang out and, you know, play with our toys or something like that. And that, that allows us to make relationships, not just with the children, but, but also uh, many times with, with parents as well. And uh, so that's been a great avenue for building relationships. School community is another, the, our girls, um, Celeste and Bella, who are 14 and uh, almost 12, they go to an international school where you have people from all over the world that are uh, part of that community. And so we've been able to develop relationships with folks uh, there as well. And then certainly just through our, our regular participation in our local church, getting to know the people there, becoming a part of their lives and their social networks also. Mm -hmm. how, have your, how have your kids adapted to uh, life in Cambodia now that the, what your girls are, are teen slash preteen agers? <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think the same for, for the girls as it is for us, that liking Cambodia has been a work in progress because we are relatively new there. Mm -hmm. And we try to remind them that it takes time to fall in love with a place and with the people. And so part of the ways that we've done that are to learn the language and to read books about the country, to ask good questions of friends and get to know them better. As JP said, to invest in those relationships in our neighborhood and school and church, I think has also helped them. So probably the first summer that we returned to the U.S. when we had just moved to Cambodia for a year, 
They still hadn't developed roots in Cambodia, but I think now three years that we've been there, we're already hearing them saying they're ready to go back. So that's always a good sign. And at the the time of this recording, you're actually stateside for home service. But by the time this airs, you'll you'll Lord willing be back on the ground in Cambodia, and we'll Indeed. we'll share more about home service in just a little bit. I want to learn more about that when we come back in just a moment. You're listening to the Coffee Hour today, and we're talking with JP and Amy Sima, serving the Lord in the Kingdom of Cambodia. And uh, we'll be back in just a moment. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golfet. You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Today we're talking with Reverend JP and Amy Sima, serving the Lord in the Kingdom of Cambodia and learning about uh, the ways that God has given them to serve, the the people they get to serve, and and what they're learning about and loving the, the people they get to serve in Cambodia. And and having served there in a, uh, for a while, uh, it sounds like you've had some time to come back to the States for home service. What is, uh, for our listeners not familiar with home service for uh, those who are for our international workers, what is home service? So home service is a an intentional period of time where missionaries come off of their field of service come back to their home country to A, connect, uh, reconnect with family, friends, B, also reconnect with the, the staff of the LCMS Office of International Mission in St. Louis, and then C, and perhaps one of the most important things, is to reconnect with those who send us to serve in Cambodia. This could be individuals or congregations who pray for us, who give financially to keep us serving in the field. Mm-hmm. What are some of the places that you have been able to uh, go during your home service this time? So this time, home service has taken in, taken us to many places in and around Virginia. That's our, our, our home base. And so we've got a number of supporting congregations in that area. But then also I had a chance to, to visit Bella Vista, Arkansas. Wonderful church. I'll put a plug in. Bella Vista Lutheran Church. Great group of people. Had a very positive visit there. And then we also got a chance to visit Mission Central with Gary Teese. Many of uh, the listeners, I suspect, know about Mission Central. Wonderful place that celebrates the uh, mission of God through the LCMS all over the world. And then Amy, where did you get to go? I got to go to my first LWML convention. Yeah. Yay! (laughs) Which was a really amazing experience to be with. 2,500 Lutheran ladies who are just passionate about God's mission around the world and to connect with old friends and to visit with people that came by the LCMS table. It was just a fantastic time. And then the last place I guess we didn't mention is that we also were in Cary, North Carolina. Indeed. And got to connect with very dear friends who probably listen to your show. So shout out to (laughs) the Mablers. (laughs) I love it when we can give shout outs on the coffee hour. (laughs) Global shout outs to people on any side of the globe. That's the best. Right. So tell us about, uh, so doing home service in the States and at the time of this recording, you're preparing to make your way back to Cambodia. That involves a a few extra steps than what it typically would during a healthy, normal year, right? Yeah. So that's, (laughs) that's been the focus of our efforts the past week or so. We'll be flying to Cambodia in just a few days now, but because of the pandemic, there's a number of, of requirements that we have to go through, including a two-week quarantine in a government-chosen hotel upon our arrival. And yeah, unfortunately, you don't get to pre-book your hotel, but you just take what they give you. And 
that there is a wide variety in terms of quality of rooms, quality of food. And uh, of course, they, they charge an uh, exorbitant amount of money to go through this quarantine process. And there's all sorts of documentation that we have to have along with us. So it's, it's onerous and annoying if I'm being honest with you. And yet at the same time, we do feel great joy to return to our field of service. The wonderful thing about home service is that we get to talk, shake hands with, and, and, and share about Cambodia with so many different people who care about what God is doing there and care enough about it that they send us to be there. And so that definitely energizes us, gives us renewed energy, passion for the, the quarantine, but more importantly, the work that we're called to do after the, the quarantine. So we are anxious to get back. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things you're looking forward to post-quarantine when you're able to really uh, get back on the ground and, and start doing work again? I think one of the things I'm looking forward to the most is reconnecting with our church's youth group. That's been just an ongoing source of joy for our, for our family. We've, we've got these youth that come every week to our house and not just the weekly gatherings on Saturday nights where we eat a bunch of food and study scripture and laugh and play games, but also the during the week stuff where young people who are at dealing with issues in their lives, or maybe they are facing decisions that they need to make. They often come to Amy or I for prayer, for advice, for just an ear to listen. And that's been a real joy to walk alongside of them and disciple them in that way. And we see great fruit in that. I've always said and, and continue to say that the when I look at the young Christians in Cambodia, it gives me great hope for the future of the country. So you've mentioned the important things that you've missed while you were gone and looking forward to getting back to, and let's talk about the important things of culture and food. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what are, are there any, are there any other aspects of culture or food that you've missed while from Cambodia while you're here on home service? Well, yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's funny examples. We, we remain, weird in, 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 in the United States, because wherever we go, we are cold. Cambodia has two seasons, uh, hot and hotter. And we had just, as, as we came to the United States, we had, we were in the hotter season. And so coming to the United States, of course, people always love to tell us how hot the weather is here. And I just, I just don't have a lot of sympathy for that view. I think it's delightful everywhere I go in the United States relative to the heat and humidity of Cambodia. So um, <laughs> I, and because of that, I find myself actually cold because everybody uses the air cons to a ridiculous extent. So I'm actually excited to get back to the heat and the humidity. I will say one thing about cultural difference, and it's maybe a better example of pre-COVID cultural difference because things have been very unusual in the last year and a half. But normally in Southeast Asia, life is lived outside on the streets and people are very friendly. And we would go for walks in our neighborhood to go to lunch or to get a coffee or just to walk around and chat with people. And I think in the U.S. you don't see that quite as much. People are kind of going to wherever they need to go and then back home. And there's a greater sense that people have you know, a very uh, tight schedule and don't take the time to stop and chat. Uh, so I think that's one of the things that I miss the most about Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the language in, South in, in Cambodia. What has been, what has language learning been like and, and conversing with the people around you? What has language learning been like? <laughs> the word slow, the word laborious comes to mind, uh, you know, People always ask you, what's the key to learning a language? And it's just putting in the time. And so it does take quite a bit of time to, to, to master, and, and you really never do master a language. But we have tried to put in that effort, and we're continuing to learn the language little by little. Most recently, I've been working on reading and writing the Khmer language, and it's quite difficult, the just pronunciation, but then also the written language is uh, based off uh, Sanskrit. 
And then there's been, you know, variations uh, in history uh, ever since. But it, you know, word by word, phrase by phrase, I read Kamai like a six-year-old probably, but you know what? That's okay. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm pleased with that progress. And then just using it every day. That's, if there is a key, that's it. You can't just study in the classroom, but you actually have to get out with people, be willing to make the mistakes, be willing to laugh at yourself. You will say things poorly or wrongly. You will say things that you didn't mean to say. Sometimes that'll be very embarrassing. And you know what? It's okay. <laughs> and I find that the people of Cambodia are really uh, wonderful in that regard, because if you mess up, they're very forgiving. And if you just try, they love you for it. So you really can't go wrong. What have you been sharing with the congregations, the, the, the folks you've been able to visit on home service? And what do you want us to know about the Lord's work in Cambodia as you're uh, returning there? Well, how can we follow you and, 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 and know what's going on with the, the work there? Yeah, well, what we've been sharing with folks is is really just wanting to celebrate with them the the scope of God's global mission. It's never uh, so much trying to get them only excited about what God is doing in Cambodia, although certainly we hope that that happens. But it's also about wanting to inspire people to think about God's mission right where they are. So I always like to talk about in our presentations that God's mission is as local as a single human heart. And we'll, you know, we'll tell stories about the way that God has touched certain people that we know in Cambodia, but then also God's mission is as global as what he's doing, you know, across the world in a larger scale. So that's, those are some of the things that we like to share. And then what was the second part of your question? You have to remind me. <laughs> how can we follow, how can how we stay can up to date on what uh, the Lord's work in Cambodia? Yeah, we'd love to have you follow us. So we have a photo blog that we maintain. It's www.simafam.com. That's C-I-M-A-F-A-M.com. We post, um, you know, photos, videos, blurbs, and then also you can sign up for our uh, newsletter. And the link to do that is also at simafam.com. So we'd love to have you get our newsletter, peruse the the posts that we put on that that photo blog and connect with us. Very good, very good. Our guests today, the Reverend JP and Amy Sima, serving the Lord in the Kingdom of Cambodia. It's just been a delight to catch up with you again, and God's blessings on your work as uh, you return to Cambodia in the very near future. Well, by the time that our, our listeners are hearing this, hopefully you're back on the ground with them safely. Thanks so much for being our guest on The Coffee Hour today. Thank you. Our pleasure. God bless. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Anywhere.